Let's talk about the biggest problem with electric cars, the batteries. This one component has always been the thorn in the side of EV adoption. First, they were too expensive to possibly make an affordable electric car that didn't suck. But now, even though the price of lithium ion batteries has dropped substantially, this component is still holding back the industry due to supply. There are just not enough of them to go around. So now we're left with this infuriating scenario where people who want an electric car and can afford an electric car can't have an electric car because nobody, not even Tesla, can build them fast enough to keep up with the demand for new vehicles. We've all heard by now that nickel in particular is a big sticking point for the battery supply chain right now. It's hard to find and difficult to mine, plus the global market is heavily influenced by Russian nickel supply. Rivian Motors CEO RJ Scaringe recently said that the battery shortage would hit the electric car industry harder than the chip shortage and could last for a decade or more. It's a grim prediction for sure, but if the industry continues on the same path they're walking right now, without getting creative when it comes to battery materials and manufacturing, then RJ might not be far from the truth. Of course, this is an issue that Tesla is already considering heavily as they move into a scaling up phase for the company. If Tesla is going to fulfill Elon Musk's promise of growing to extreme size, then they will also need an extreme supply of batteries to go along with that. And to accomplish this, they can't put all of the eggs in one basket, or in this case, battery chemistry. So Tesla is taking some very important steps to diversify their battery portfolio, both with some tried and true formulas and some experimental new ideas that could pay off big time in the long run. We're getting into the battery designs that can save the EV revolution. So let's get going. We all know this word, diversification. Typically, it gets used in terms of investments, like when your financial advisor tells you not to YOLO your entire life savings into Dogecoin at 30 cents, and you say, nah, dude, Papa Elon's got my back. And now you live in a shed. Not that I would know anything about that. Anyway, this is something that Tesla specifically referenced in their first financial report of 2022, writing in a shareholder's letter, diversification of battery chemistries is critical for long-term capacity growth to better optimize our products for their various use cases and expand our supplier base. This is why nearly half of Tesla vehicles produced in Q1 were equipped with a lithium iron phosphate battery containing no nickel or cobalt. Currently, LFP batteries are used in most of our standard range vehicle products, as well as commercial energy storage applications. So what they're saying here is that Tesla is currently diversifying between two battery chemistries. One is their old standby, the nickel cobalt manganese formula in their 2170 and 1865 cells. The 1865 powers the Model S and X, while the 2170 goes into the Model 3 and Y long range and performance. These are amazing batteries. They have a great combination of energy density and power output that allows Tesla vehicles to blow the doors off the competition in terms of acceleration and range. They're also very expensive, thanks to the exotic metals used in the composition. The other half is the iron-based cell that powers the new Model 3 rear-wheel drive, which is available globally, and the Model Y standard, which is only available in China. These cells are very cheap by comparison because they have an iron-based cathode, the same stuff we use to make pots and pans. So we can deduce from this that the Model 3 rear-wheel drive with about 270 miles of range, give or take depending on wheel choice, accounts for nearly half of all Tesla sales in Q1 2022. This is important to remember. Tesla's SVP of engineering, Drew Baglino, followed up with this very interesting comment on the transition of American-made Model 3s to LFP chemistry, saying, Half of our products were LFP last quarter, which shows how quickly we were able to respond, but honestly, it wasn't because of a raw material shortage. It just seemed like the right thing to do. We could change our cathode chemistry. 
and there's more to be done on the cathode side, and we are actively pursuing it to give us substitution flexibility in response to market conditions between the other cathodes that are out there that can be competitive in our vehicle. There are many options. I think this is a very significant quote that we need to keep in mind going forward. He says that the company was able to transition battery chemistries very quickly, and they did that not because they were forced to, but just because it was the right move to make at the time. This change came several months before the current nickel crisis. Then he insinuates that Tesla would change their cathode chemistry again if a better option was to come along, and that they are proactively researching these options so that they are using the best chemistry available for their product at any given time. This is very smart. Most Chinese EV makers are using a very similar strategy and have already transitioned to LFP batteries. Top tier Chinese companies like BYD and NIO are even creating their own unique versions of traditional LFP battery packs. BYD have developed a new cell format that they call the Blade. These long, thin rectangle cells kind of look like the Blade from one of those ridiculous anime swords, and NIO has actually launched a hybrid battery pack that uses both NCM and LFP cells together, allowing them to get the best of both worlds. Meanwhile, the majority of the auto industry who aren't Tesla or Chinese are still just YOLOing into nickel chemistry when it's at an all-time high price, with no sign of changing. This is how you end up living in a shed. Again, not that I would know. But if we go beyond LFP, what are those many other options that Drew was referring to? Did you know that two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they are 35? The majority of our viewership is men, and two of our team members at the Tesla space are already experiencing hair loss, so we're excited to work with today's sponsor, Keeps. Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. All Keeps treatment plans are doctor-recommended and delivered straight to your door. At about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy, you can avoid the hassle while saving money. It's a win-win. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you, and each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. Most Keeps customers notice results within six months of starting treatment, so give us a little time to share our own. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash teslaspace or click the link in the description. Again, that's keeps.com slash teslaspace. And let's get back to the video. We can look at this idea of manganese battery cells because this is an option that Elon Musk himself has referenced a couple of times in the recent past. So we know it's on his mind. At the Giga Berlin opening celebration, Elon reiterated that for the foreseeable future, Tesla, like the rest of the industry, will focus on nickel-based chemistries for longer range vehicles and iron phosphate for shorter range vehicles. But Elon did add a brief but exciting comment about a manganese-based battery saying, I think there's an interesting potential for manganese. And this actually echoes something that Elon said back in September 2020 at the Battery Day event when he was riffing on some of Tesla's battery chemistry experiments in the 4680 cell. At the time, Elon was saying that Tesla could eliminate cobalt from the equation entirely and look towards reducing the amount of nickel, if possible, by substituting manganese. Elon said, it is relatively straightforward to do a cathode that's two-third nickel and one-third manganese, which will allow us to make 50% more cell volume with the same amount of nickel. And then, bringing it back to 2022 at the Berlin event, Elon reminded everyone that it doesn't matter what a battery is made of as long as it is a sustainable material, saying, at very large scale, we need tens, maybe hundreds of millions of tons ultimately, so the materials used to produce these batteries at a very large scale need to be common materials or you can't scale. Now, a manganese-based cell isn't a hypothetical. They do exist, they're just not common. Tesla has used manganese-rich cathode cells in the past for the Powerwall home battery, and Nissan used a high manganese cathode in the original battery for the LEAF, which, prior to the Model 3, was the best-selling electric car in the world for many years. 
Volkswagen has also put a high manganese cell on their battery roadmap that was released last year. This is a very promising idea that could actually be a halfway point between traditional lithium ion and LFP cells. Several research groups have released papers with promising results on manganese rich cathode batteries that could offer interesting features as they boast higher energy density than iron phosphate batteries and a potentially lower price than nickel rich batteries. And then there is the world of speculative battery chemistries. These are ideas that scientists are pretty sure could work and have potential to be revolutionary for the electric vehicle industry but still have yet to be proven in real world applications. Solid state batteries are a great example of this. In theory, solid state is the answer to all of our problems when it comes to electric cars. These cells would be affordable, easy to manufacture, extremely fast charging, and totally resistant to bursting into flames when damaged. However, it's now been decades since the solid state concept was introduced and we still have no functioning product to speak of. It's still just a very good idea. Nissan is the latest company to come forward and claim that they are close to cracking the solid state code. In April, Nissan announced it was currently prototyping all solid state batteries with a timeline to start pilot producing cells in 2024 that would power a series of Nissan EVs in 2028. They join Volkswagen, Mercedes, Honda, and of course Toyota, who were the first to hitch their wagon to solid state to save their crappy electric cars. Both Volkswagen and Toyota have aspirations of opening their own solid state pilot plants in 2025 to 2026. So Nissan seemingly have a plan to beat them to production. The reason Nissan might have come out with a lead is their choice to move battery development in-house, taking a page from Tesla's vertical integration philosophy. Then, there are really speculative battery chemistries out there like aluminum air. These things produce electricity simply from the reaction of the air with aluminum, somehow. I couldn't even begin to explain this to you, but this particular cell design has one of the highest energy densities out of all batteries. Right now, they are seemingly only used by the military to power their radios, but the idea is that if this cell could ever be scaled up to the size necessary for an electric car, then it would have the potential for up to eight times the range of a lithium ion battery while allowing the vehicle to have significantly lower total weight at the same time. The downside though is that the aluminum in the cathode has a tendency to be corroded by the electrolyte in the cell so the batteries do not have a very long working life. There's also an idea to use graphene as a battery material at some point in the future. Graphene is one of those man-made futuristic wonder materials. It conducts electricity better than copper, it's 200 times stronger than steel, while also being six times lighter, and is almost transparent at the same time. This again is one of those things that is a great idea in theory to make batteries out of, and a lot of people are seemingly working very hard on it, but not something that we should be expecting to see until at least a decade, maybe two down the road. Anyway, hopefully we all learned a good bit about diversification and why it's important for building a sustainable energy future. It's not good to get too heavily invested in any one battery material. It's dangerous, really. Just as dangerous as investing all of your money in dog coins. So just like Tesla, we should always be keeping an eye towards the future when it comes to battery technology. Do you think Tesla could be secretly developing their own solid state or even top secret next generation battery chemistry? Drop your theories in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up at the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.